Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today, guys, we're going to be jumping down into the world of VeChain. Recently seen a pretty significant pump to the upside. We're going to talk about that, see what's going on there, and take a look at the bit of the macro and take a look and think uh, whether or not there is more room to the downside, whether we're going to the moon, or whether or not all of this is about to conclude and we're about to have a nice correction. As I get into it, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, tap the bell, and you will not miss another video update. Join us down in Discord, though. It is the place to be and you're missing out if you haven't yet joined check it out linked in below let's uh let's get into this one though feed chain paired up with usdt on the hourly chart in binance is the data source we'll briefly take a look at this we'll spend more time looking at the macro um but essentially it does look like we have had or oh, about to kind of conclude a zigzag pattern uh, to the upside here so it does look like a correction is due uh, soon but i don't think we're necessarily there just yet we were kind of hoping that we were done up this higher end, um, but it looks like we have this one coming in here now as well, which is fine. Uh, we can kind of just take a look at this and take uh, stock of the positioning. So basically, with everything that was going on, it was uh, a one, two, up here for three, uh, coming down into four and then potentially fifth. Um, now looking at it, we kind of have a five wave stretch inside wave three as well. Um, so yeah, we, we are where we are with that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this structure from the downside here. Uh, so it looks like we've come down in a nice three wave structure, up in a three wave structure, down, and we've got to come down. We've already met the minimum requirements on there, uh, so we don't have to come down lower on the internal count but i do think that's something that we should expect uh, so let's go ahead and throw this in uh, so 2.697 uh, potentially before we move on up so i'll go ahead and draw a little dash line right on that one and just move it up a dash there we go and um, 26.97 that there would be kind of my expectation on this fourth wave low point overall it would be some kind of a b c or w x and y uh, to that effect then of course we would move up into let me get rid of that into our fifth wave high and um, this would be driven from our fib levels here down to our targeted range here um at the 2.697 and then we'll target out the 1.236 to the 1.618 uh, on the FIB levels, basically 2.895 to 2.958. Uh, that would then actually mark the end of our double, uh, well, out of our zigzag pattern anyway, because uh, we do have five waves coming up here. The whole entire thing essentially would be a big A, B, C, A, B, and C, like so. And if I just check to C, I would estimate that we are probably, yeah, right in between the one and the 1.236, right inside the expectations of a C-wave structure. Um, so that should mark that as complete. So essentially that there would just means that all of these corrections that we've been stringing it along, just following the market, not setting a trend essentially, uh, meaning that we have to kind of, you know, think about that move to the downside. So as I kind of zoom out of this, you can kind of see uh, that we, if I bring it to the four hour, you can kind of see it's all a B-wave structure, right? And unless price moves up, um, really significantly higher than 3.3, uh, which is possible it can do, um, but we'd have to go up higher than 3.388 uh, in order for us to kind of say that we're not in a B wave structure. Um, so looking at it, it still looks like we are, and potentially we still have room to the downside. Okay, specifically on these four hour charts, if I take it to an eight hour, it becomes even more apparent. You can kind of see what's going on here from this higher end. Uh, what we've got is we've kind of got a big A, B, and C structure that took us down into our 1.5 cent range, and then this. This move coming up here is a string of lots of corrective moves. Altogether, it would probably look more like a WXYXZ if we were to go down and kind of, you know, try to bring everything together in a, a really nice, neat way. Um, but essentially, unless we push up higher than 30, uh, yeah, 0 0.03387, this dashed line right up here. In fact, I will go ahead and remove um, some of these. Let me just go ahead and remove all these dashed lines because I think they're just going to cloud things up. So we can see this dashed line right here. This one at 3.387, uh, right? If price stays below this level um, and obviously goes up into the overbought area, which we'll talk about in a moment uh, as well, considering that we're running out of steam uh, the likelihood is that we've got to move down and the targeted range uh, for for this would be bring this up considering we're on a bigger macro uh we're probably pushing up a little bit here now as well so we'll leave it there but i think actually i'll push us just up into that range uh, a little bit higher but we'll be talking about you know 1.3 
through to about 1.1 uh, cent if we needed to. I think 2 cent is an obvious thing when it comes to VeChain, um, but you can kind of see that we're looking for a Y wave nice and low. Um, it has like, a real broad depth to it um, overall, so it's really hard to get a good anchor on it, but I do think we've got to have a nice correction. Now, this is obviously just on the 8 hour. If we come over into our daily, we can kind of see this without all that kind of clutter going on. We can kind of see this big structural move uh, potentially to the downside. Now, the obvious is that we start from this one up here. This was March 2022 okay we came down here quite nicely but we don't think we're done yet we can scale scale this out if we take this level and we rally this up to that higher range okay we take all of this structure and we put it to this move that we had right the origin of our a wave at that 3.3 um 87 I think it was approximately I'm going to zoom in. I want to get this as close as I can for you guys. So let's go ahead and just zoom in on this. Um, so let's see. Let's take a look. Uh, so if I pull this right onto there at 88, so 3.388. Let me just check. Uh, 3.87 is down one more. So I'm just going to have to add minor adjustment right in there. There we go. Okay, so that's exactly on the wick. Okay, so if we were to think about this as a giant three-wave structure, Okay, so we'd come here, we'd take this high from March down to our June low. We rallied up into August of 2022. Then our targeted range, guys, happens to be down here at less than one cent. So we don't want to necessarily think about uh, the massive, massive corrections. I mean, they're possible. But instead, if we reflect on what was going on in this mine account, okay, although minimum expectations could, or minimum requirements for a C wave would potentially already be met. We'd look at it as a giant A coming up here into a giant B, and then we come down into a C wave. And this is where we get the disparities between the macro levels, but it's okay. We can give ourselves a nice little range. So we'll go ahead and put this up a little bit higher, and we can kind of see that you know, we're right inside this sweet spot, right? We're talking about coming down to 1.3 to 1.1, uh, which we just spoke about. Uh, if I just draw that in right in here, you can kind of get a good idea that, yeah, we've got to come down a little bit lower. Now, if we were to come down to, let's say, 1.1, we're talking about really resting around that 786 area on the fibs. Again, these are key areas for us. So it does look like we have to move on down. But of course, the invalidation would happen uh, right on that level at 3.387. So anything going above 3.387 does kind of then tell me we've probably already completed those, uh, this structure to the downside. Doesn't necessarily mean that we're not gonna go down, we're not gonna correct, we will correct. It just means that we have to be really cautious about what those structures look like and how they emerge. Essentially, it, to me, it looks like we've done a really big or looking to kind of do a giant corrective structure overall with this little mini correction right up in here in March. Uh, we can kind of see that, one, two, and three right there. And so all in all, it looks like we're doing this nice big corrective structure to the downside. Once complete, they'll talk about moving up and there's going to be some fantastic runs up here. I still think they're going to be a really good time in the bull market for VeChain, but it just doesn't look like we are done with the existing lows. It does look like we have to kind of think about more... Um, downside pressure when it comes to VeChain. I think it's going to be market driven. I don't think there's anything wrong with what VeChain are doing. I think they're moving mountains. I think it's got some fantastic technology. It's integrating uh, with so many real world businesses. I, I, it's hard not to be bullish on VeChain. Um, and these prices are very, very good, right? You know, dollar cost averaging is probably going to be the thing to do on this next pullback. And don't think about buying and selling and swing trading necessarily uh, if you're not already comfortable with doing those kind of things. Essentially, to me, it looks like VeChain has uh, uh, some real good potential to the upside and we don't want to necessarily just kind of sell our positions and thinking that we can always buy back down cheaper because that's not always what's going to be possible it does look like the next pull to the downside is probably going to be the last one that i can see on the charts i can't see any more or in any other way of kind of thinking that we're going to have more downside price pressure so dollar cost averaging into v chain anywhere around kind of the two and a half or less uh, cent wise seems to be a pretty decent thing to do we want to get as close to the bottom as possible but we do not want to try and time it uh, the upside potential on vchain in my opinion is absolutely massive um, i'm going to leave the video right there though guys it helps you understand you know where the structures are at a macro level helps you understand what i think is going on in the minor uh, micro kind of stuff as well let me know your thoughts in the comments down below um, and of course join us down in discord if you haven't done so already until the next one though guys have a fantastic day